Hey everyone, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. I often get asked about different technical indicators, where they come from, how you use them. So today we will talk about the Copic Curve. So the Copic Curve actually has a pretty fascinating uh, backstory. We're going to talk about where uh, this indicator came from. Sedge Copic or Edwin Copic designed this indicator in the 1960s. We'll talk about the article he wrote in Barron's how it is uh, it was translated into what we call the Copic Curve, how you use it, and we'll look at some of the historical performance of this indicator and what it's telling us now in early 2023. Before we get to that chart, if you like this sort of thinking about technical analysis, market history, behavioral finance, if that's of interest to you, I hope, you, hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Finally, put a comment below. Do you agree with what the Copic Curve is saying? And uh, where do you see the S&P over the next month? Let me know in the comments below. Now, looking at the chart, we are looking at the Copic Curve. Now, I have some vertical lines, which are technically not part of the indicator. These are uh, some visual cues I put on here, which we'll refer, refer to in a minute. But you, uh, we have a monthly chart of the S&P, so we're going back all the way to 1983, which is when the Dow broke above 1,000 and left it in the rearview mirror, not to uh, touch it again, uh, knock on wood. Uh, but overall, you can see this big uh, uptrend from lower left to upper right. Uh, and then in the bottom, this black uh, oscillator, this black uh, series here at the bottom is called the Copic Curve. You can see some numbers in here, 14, 11, and 10. So here's the story of the Copic Curve. Uh, Sedge Copic, or Edwin Copic, was a market strategist in the 1960s. I think 1965, he wrote an article for Barron's where he introduced this idea of the Copic Curve. Now, the story is actually pretty unique, in, even, even for technical analysis. Some, some technical indicators have some really uh, esoteric beginnings. This one's an interesting one. Supposedly, what he did was went to an Episcopal priest and asked them uh, about a uh, mourning period, right? When someone in your family passed away, what's the average mourning period? Uh, you know, time to mourn your loss. And they said about 11 to 14 months. So what Copic did was look at an 11-month rate of change and a 14-month rate of change and basically look at the difference there, right? So what's the 11-month rate of change minus the 14-month rate of change? Then smooth that out with a 10 period weighted moving average. And if you're familiar with a regular moving average, you add up X number. So if you have a 50 day simple moving average, you take up 50 uh, things, 50 data points, add them all up, you know, divide by 50. It's a simple mean, and that's your average value. The problem is it weights all 50 observations the same. So a 50 period weighted moving average would actually weight the most current data the most. And then as you go further away from today, as you go further back in time, it's weighted less and less. So it's kind of a heaviest weighting to the current data and then less and less as you go back over time. So it's intended to lean more into the more recent data. As, uh, exponential moving averages also have a different methodology, but a similar concept of trying to weight it more to the most recent data. So Copic did the 11 and 14 period uh, moving average or um, rate of change, then took the 10 period weighted moving average. And this is using monthly data. So it's a really long-term analysis. And then simply look at what the curve is doing. So I've highlighted here on the chart uh, some different things. Uh, basically on the uh, left half of the chart, I'm highlighting when the indicator um, has gone, uh, has been negative and has turned back positive. And there are a couple different ways we can use this. Number one is just to look at when the copper curve has been in a downtrend and when it starts to turn higher particularly and most importantly when it's below the zero line. So when the copper curve gets below zero, I think of that as sort of initiating the signal. Once that happens, we know we're in a downtrend. Now the question is, when are we? when is the downtrend over? And what I like to do is look at when the copper curve has gone from down slope to upward slope, meaning going from a downtrend to an uptrend. So below zero means we're mourning the loss and so basically mourning the bear market. When the Copic curve turns back uh, as a positive slope, when it goes from downtrend to uptrend, that starts to indicate that the uh, that the mourning period is over. Another thing you can actually do is wait for the indicator to go back above zero. So below zero is a sell signal essentially, or a downtrend, and back above zero is a is a buy signal or an uptrend. It's another way you can use it uh, as well. 
So on this chart of the S&P 500, on the left half, uh, you know, we really didn't get much below zero because honestly, this was a secular bull market period in the 80s and 90s, right? Pretty strong market with some notable drawdowns, right? And things like 1987, 1994, 1990, these were, uh, you know, different uh, different uh, sort of short-term crisis periods. But at the end of the day, the trend was still pretty positive. So you can see we rarely had a COPPA curve below zero. It really, really only, uh, it tends to happen a lot more often, obviously in secular bear markets, we have a lot more price deterioration. But you can see when we went below zero and had downward slope and then started to turn back higher, you can see that happened at the end of 1984, sort of mid-1988, uh, early 1991, and then early 1995. And all four of those were pretty good entry points sort of uh, at the end of those uh, pullback periods beginning of the uptrend. Now, when we have a secular bear market like we saw in the 2000s and early 2000 teens, you can see that the indicator looks a little different. I see I'm highlighting in red when we go below the zero line. So it didn't happen until the trend had really rolled over here, right? In the first quarter of 2001. You can see you got a bit of a false signal here when we when we turned back positive there in late 01 because then that was after 9-11. Then again, we had that, that uh, next big leg down into the October 02 low, which ended up being the eventual low for this cycle. We turned back positive in early 2003. That's the buy signal I tend to use. But if you're a little more conservative and wait for a break above the zero line, that happened in the first quarter of 2003. And again, it's not intended to pick the bottom. It's intended to confirm when the bottom has actually occurred. You can see the same thing in 2008. We went below the zero line here in early 2008, indicating that the 07 peak was in and that we were now in a uh, mourning period as a market. You can see the indicator went from sloping downwards to sloping upwards, sort of the second quarter of 2009. That was right after the 09 low. We went back above zero at the end of 09. So again, if you're more conservative, want to wait for that, you still got in for the bulk of the move. You had a real brief uh, nod below that zero line in 2015 to 2016, really happened in the first, uh, in January 2016. And a couple months later, we went right back above the uh, zero line and indicating it all clear. The reason why I'm talking about this indicator now is because it did indeed go bearish in the first quarter of, or sorry, the third quarter of 2022, this was over the summer, you can see the COPPA curve turned negative. And that was the first time it was below zero since 2016. Pretty meaningful. And that tells you that the downtrend is pretty significant. So what would you be looking for here? First thing, and again, you have to wait for the monthly closing data. So you can't really update this chart until January 31st, until February 28th or 29th, depending on the year, but waiting for the end of every month. It is a monthly indicator that updates at the close every month. So we look on January uh, 31st, do we turn positive, right? Do we finally have a higher value than we did yes, uh, last month? If so, I would argue that the COPPA curve has then turned positive. Again, more conservative and more uh, a more uh, conservative way to approach this indicator is to wait for a break above zero. I like to look for the turn higher though, because I, in my opinion, I'm okay missing uh, you know a move. You've had one false uh, buy signal in the last uh, you know 40 years. I think I can live with that. I would rather look for an upward slope and get in early and just manage my risk. Last chart I want to show you is I like to combine something like the COPPA curve with other indicators. This is the monthly PPO or uh, the monthly MACD is almost identical to this uh, created by Jerry Apple. And this is the, uh, the MACD or the PPO is an adaptation of his work, which is basically looking at exponential moving averages. Similar idea to the COPPA curve, but we're using exponential averages instead of the rate of change and weighted average that I explained earlier in the video. The buy signal is basically when you're uh, low and the indicator is below zero, and then the uh, PPO line or the MACD line crosses above the red signal line. So you can see here in 2003, we had the curve turn higher. We had the monthly PPO uh, cross higher right about the same time. Same thing in 2009, you had the uh, COPPA curve turn higher. A couple months later, we had the buy signal from the PPO. So if and when we get into a deteriorating market, and we have an extended bear market phase, which we're kind of right there or getting close, you look to see when the uh, COPPA curve goes below zero. Does the slope slope back higher? Does it turn back higher? A higher uh, change in that indicator and or do we get a buy signal from the monthly PPO? Those would be the indications to me that an extended bear market period has started to rotate higher. So the fact that the COPPA curve is bearish tells me we're in a bear market phase according to this indicator until the slope goes back positive. 
So there we go. That is the Copic curve, again, created by Sedge Copic. And again, it's it's a fascinating beginning to an indicator that supposedly he talked to a, uh, an Episcopal priest to understand a mourning period. But if you think about it, it really hits on what I like about it. Is it hits on the behavioral psychology of bull and bear market phases. When a bear market persists, it really is a mourning period, right? People turn despondent. People turn away from the markets. They tend to be very skeptical of any rally because uh, they, this is now a mourning period. It's a, it's a period of uh, price and, uh, and, and investor sentiment deterioration. But at some point, we sort of emerge from that, uh, that, um, uh, that hibernation, that mental hibernation. We change uh, uh, perspective from a mourning period to sort of a new uh, rebirth, just like a market tends to have a rebirthing period and, and emerge from the bear market phases. And 100% of the time so far, the market has recovered from every bear market cycle we've seen so far in market history, continues to make new all-time highs soon after. So at this point, if the question is, does the COPPA curve turn back higher? Check in at the end of every month to see if that's the case. That is the uh, explanation of the COPPA curve, what the indicator is and what it's telling us here in January. If you like this sort of thinking about market history, technical analysis, behavioral finance, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Put a comment below. What do you see as the next move for the S&P? Do you see us as in a mourning period? And where do you see the S&P over the next month to six weeks? Let me know in the comments below. For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, be safe. Talk to you again soon.